Hey everyone, welcome into today's lesson. Today we're gonna to be doing some Amazon FBA product research completely live. In fact, if you're here live, hop in the chat, let me know you're here, let me know where you're tuning in from, and if you have any questions at all. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be doing uh, about an hour of Amazon FBA product research here today. I had this interesting idea, and tell me if you like this. So I, I sell made in the USA products, product right now, working on second product. And where I'm going with this is I saw that Amazon had a handmade section. And then on that handmade section, there's an editor's picks for made in USA. Now I haven't clicked in there yet, but I was like, what if, you know, people always ask me all the time, they're like, Paul, how do you do Amazon FBA with made in USA, right? It seems nearly impossible to find a US manufacturer. And yet I did it. Um, so <laughs> how did I do it? Well, it, it starts with trying to find products that are easily sourced in the US. So I wanted to look at Amazon FBA product research through the lens of made in the USA products. So what, what if it's already being sourced here and that's all we're looking at? Generally what works well here are incredibly simple products that are almost more commodity-like. And there's a huge gap in this space on Amazon. There are millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of commodities sold on Amazon. And yet all of the private label sellers seem to flock away from those. In fact, I've even heard in the past, and I might've even said it years ago, avoid commodities, avoid basics. But I've kind of, not kind of, I have built a brand around a basic commodity product. And let's just do believability time in the last 12 months, I've scaled that brand to do $331,000 in sales with one single product. And so I wanted to try and pass on that knowledge to you. And people are always asking me too, like, yeah, whatever, man, but what about profit? I could show you profit as well. Let's go ahead. I took a screenshot from my seller board um, and let's look at most recent, not hypothetical. Come on, God damn you, open. <laughs> How many times do I have to click on the thing? All right, here we go. So $875 today so far, February 26th. That's today's date. Now keep in mind, there's an attribution time frame. Usually things don't update until like three, four days. So um, that's why I've included a screen grab with seven days ago, eight days ago, just for consistency sake. Yesterday, um, again, probably not fully loaded yet, but $329 and I'm just looking at profit here. Gross profit seven days ago, 42% profit on a good day. Um, after all the ads and all the expenses of this uh, specific brand. So now that I've shown you that I'm not, um, you know, some guru just trying to sell you something, I don't want to sell you anything. I just want you to come hang out, learn the way that I like to do product research. If it clicks with you, great, take it away and build a really successful brand. And then maybe one day I can invest in your brand and uh, we can work together. Uh, until then, I hope to just give you the most valuable information possible for free. Um, and let's kick this thing off. Otto in the chat, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Um, how's it going? Let me know in the chat, um, by the way, what part of this business are you in right now? And are you currently selling? Are you just doing some product research right now? Um, I'm always interested to hear from all of you. So let's click in here. We're done waiting around. <laughs> let's click Made in USA. And I'm curious what's in here because we already know all of these are made in the USA. So it takes away a little bit of the intimidation of trying to find something, reverse it and try and put in all this work to identify a market and then just learn that it's not gonna ever be able to be sourced here. So again, I've never done this before, this product research method. This is just something I was thinking about today um, when I was setting up for this live stream. I, like went into handmade, I was gonna do maybe best sellers and then I clicked in here and I was like, Hmm, made in USA. So these are already here. So what if we could just win with a new formula in this case, like we were, if we're doing an air freshener made in the USA and assuming they're selling well, there's enough search volume. Um, could we do a very basic product like that, but brand it in such a way that it's impossible to ignore? And I bet you we could. Um, so let's look through here. So we have, hmm, I wonder, can, can we just open Helium 10 right on this page? Randy, welcome. Hey Paul, just saw you're live. You bet I am. Um, I <laughs> that sounded so so odd, like an AI. You bet I am live. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to do some product research live. I I, I wish, uh, initially wanted to do a YouTube video today, 
and it just started getting late. I went out and got a coffee at a coffee shop with my girlfriend today, did some grocery shopping. And I was like, eh, by the time I like edit something and upload it, it's going to be, you know, evening time, people on the East Coast of the US might not even be awake anymore. So I was like, let me just go live um, and hang out with everyone, uh, stay consistent here on YouTube. And um, yeah, Monday night product research session. So frankincense, myrrh, sense. Okay, these aren't doing too much revenue. And look past those, these are actually sponsored. So they must be category sponsored for made in USA or um, handmade. And then maybe some way of adding uh, Amazon FBA or <laughs> Amazon FBA. Uh, I'm looking at the title of my YouTube live stream over here while I was speaking. Um, okay, this is, this is more interesting. So we can start from a place where there's already a bunch of demand. Let's try that. So 41,000 on cold kicker shower steamer. So aromatherapy for the shower made in the USA product. Uh, Randy said, always up for watching you do some product research. Thanks. I appreciate that. I'm always up to do some. I genuinely have a passion for this business model. That's why I've recorded myself talking about it for five years. Um, it's always been so intriguing to me. As soon as I figured out what Amazon FBA was, product research instantly became like something I do to unwind. It's like, you know, you could, someone will put on TV or put on Netflix. I'll do some product research. Why not? Uh, it's, it's cool. And it's like a good mental exercise. It's like I'm able to think through every day, how would I start more successful brands if I had to? Um, I don't need to have the capital yet to grow several brands and the employees yet to grow several brands at the same time. I can just focus on what I'm doing. But intellectually, I could think about other markets and how would I do all this stuff? Not to mention my group of um, students in my mastermind. I have a closed, like, s small 30-person mastermind. Um, and one of the things that we talk about is you know, what, what would you do in all of these situations instead of like, let's find the perfect thing. And just theoretically at first, what are a hundred markets that you think you could probably be successful in? And then we edit on to each other. Like, here's an idea, here's an idea, but you know, most of this isn't good. And then accidentally, usually what happens is you find your market doing stuff like this. Uh, Matt said, Hey, um, Randy said, I'd love to get to that point someday. Um, it's usually somewhat a struggle for me. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, Randy. I mean, it, it is not easy to start a business and <laughs> I, I'm living proof of that. I've definitely struggled like private label had a ton of ups and downs and it wasn't the most stable thing, which is why I'm so excited to be onto this whole brand building thing. Um, Salim said, what's up, Paul? Is it possible to sell in the US from Saudi Arabia? Absolutely, you can sell from anywhere in the world on Amazon. That's the beauty of um, an e-commerce online brand. So these are, the photos are really bad here. That's one of the first things that I'm noticing. Let me open this up so it's not like six pickle, pix, pixels, six pickles. Okay, yeah, like it's very clinical, which is odd because the thing they're trying to sell is a scent and yet they're not showing anything that I can wrap my head around and turn into a scent in my mind. Like I'd be showing certain herbs. It says eucalyptus, peppermint and eucalyptus. I don't see those things anywhere. So it's very strange to me that this is doing well, actually. And so we, I'll just think simply, if there's existing customers for this and this sells so well, and the rest of the market looks just as boring and clinical as they do. Could I go in and actually create a feeling in a customer when they search on Amazon, when they see my brand? And that's more so my model now. It's not so much any individual idea and what I can bundle with it, how I can differentiate it and be better than everyone else or faster or, um, you know, usually when we think in terms of features, we're thinking the wrong way. And features are things that are nice once you have the product in your hands but you don't really wanna sell features. And on Amazon, for some reason, we don't think of this as sales. It is sales, it's just digital sales. And so you have to be able to move people from looking for a way to solve a problem they have to knowing that you exist. And the way to best get them to know that you exist is to disrupt them in a moment. And on Amazon, that moment's really short and a disruption happens. We have to look, look this up anyway. A disruption happens, so if I did shower steamers, that's my need as a customer. I'm like, you know, 
I take a shower a couple times a week. Maybe I take a shower every day. I don't really have, I'm living a busy life. I don't have time to do aromatherapy else. Well, how hard is it to just turn on a damn, um, what are those things called? Anyway, <laughs> person's looking for this. I, I don't know exactly the problem there, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to reframe it into a way that you can start thinking of it in terms of just the person and what they might be thinking. Um, so maybe they just want it, want it to smell really nice in the shower. Maybe it's super pleasant. It makes them, you know, feel like they have like a little spa, uh, but it's just their average shower. So that might be the person who's looking for this. I'm not going to break it down into demographics yet. We can get into that when we look at the actual reviews and start building a better idea of who we might have here. Um, but let's just look at the sales in general so far. Currently I have 10 people in the chat. Hello everyone. Welcome. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to hop in the chat and ask. As I absolutely crush a watermelon mint seltzer. Um, all right. Could you give your thoughts on USA products and suppliers? Are there any specific niches that are made in the USA better than Chinese? Yeah, so basic commodities where you're not using molding or you're not certainly not electronics, right? A lot of the like gadgets in gizmos, I recently did like a little comedy skit short. Um, it's, it's like called Don't Look, it's the Amazon guy. But anyway, just reminded me of that because I said uh, gadgets and gizmos. Um, <laughs> check that out if you haven't already, it's pretty funny. Um, that stuff doesn't really get produced here. It's like we can import coffee and have someone locally like bag it for you, or we can do like concrete or wood or cleaners, soap, deodorant, like things that things you can picture being manufactured in someone's backyard and or a small company making it. We don't really do the whole big factory, like we're not a production country. So you have to look at the things that don't even make real sense to source elsewhere. Uh, maybe it's a food brand or maybe it is um, gardening supplies, like things ju that just use the earth that's around us, um, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. I said, what did it feel like when you hit your first seven figures? I've never hit seven figures, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I would love to tell you one day. I mean, maybe like in the lifetime of my businesses, the revenue might have hit that. I haven't even looked at that because I don't really care. It's kind of arbitrary to me. Uh, I'm trying to create immense value and like make things that I'm excited about. Um, obviously, profit is super important to me, but I, I've never done close to seven figures. Sorry. Um, don't do food. It's terrible. Been there, done that. That's a very broad statement. And there are super successful food companies. So I would encourage you to widen your scope in the way that you think of things. Don't, it's dangerous to get locked into saying everything here is bad. Maybe for you, maybe not for someone else. Um, so let's check this out. Shower steamers. There is 600,000, 150,000, 180,000, 800,000, 70,000. It's a pretty big market. Um, search volume is really, really large. This is a little bit bigger than the area where I'm playing ball right now about twice as big this market size. And the only problem with that is we're, we're just gonna have to look at what are the long tail search terms for this. So what I might do is grab X-ray keywords. By the way, if you guys need Helium 10, I have a discount link in the description. I know probably everyone in their whole family has Helium 10 at this point. So um, yeah, but if you haven't, there you go x-ray keywords let's see so it looks like what a lot of these might be ranking for oh interesting i didn't even think of this was valentine's day gifts hmm interesting so is the customer someone who's not even buying it for themselves that changes things changes the way we do our marketing changes everything 
Um, I would be happy if you could give your thoughts on products from Japan, South Korea, or more developed countries. Please let us know the discount code. Discount code is SAVAGE10 or SAVAGE20. Um, if you want 10% off for lifetime, SAVAGE10. Let me grab, here I could do this for you guys. I'll grab the, grab the link and throw it in the chat. There you go. Um, that page uh, will show you both of the options. So that changes everything. If it is for someone else, eucalyptus for shower, um, 46,000 search time. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a look at some of these reviews. Right off the bat, um, I, the first thing that I care about way before that is what does the market feel like? And do I feel like there's anyone who's really playing ball here? I don't wanna compete against other disruptors really. Um, maybe one day I will, and I'm sure, I'm sure I will. And it'll just be who's playing harder, right? <laughs> if one company's bigger, has more resources and cares about it way more, I'm sure it'll be reflected in their product um, and in their offers. But right now, I think to get both my feet under me in the branding world, and like someone said before, what was it like when you hit your first seven figures? Um, well, let's try and do that. Like, can, can I get to the seven figure mark? And, you know, I, I try not to talk about that kind of way of thinking too much because I feel like entrepreneurship online is riddled with these crazy figures and these arbitrary goals. And that stuff will never move you to do something. You have to become deeply curious about a subject and want to spend time doing it because to do anything that's successful, and I can attest to this, I've tried many different products and I've been selling on Amazon for five years. The only thing that got this to the point where it worked for me is when I slowed way down, I stopped trying to hit seven figures. I, I kept built, is the stream looking all messed up right now? Um, one second. Let me know in the chat, is the stream looking weird? It looked like it glitched out for a second. Sorry if that did happen. Um, yeah, these arbitrary goals don't drive us, right? We, we want to make it so that if we look at just like the basic philosophy of building a, a brand or seven figure business is like we need to press the right buttons and allocate the right assets to tackle the right projects. That's it, right? Like there's nothing different there. Like it, if you just literally anyone with five grand, 10 grand can start a brand that'll be worth a million dollars in the next 18 months. It is possible and someone is going to do it. I'm doing it right now. I showed you my sales at the beginning of the video. That will be a seven figure brand. Um, it's because it's it's just calculations now. It's just like, if we can do this and create a blueprint here for this, I'll, all I have to do is press the right buttons, make the, the right calls at the right time based on the data that I have. If that's the fun part for you, is like coming up with great jaw dropping packaging design thinking through the customer experience of what it's going to be like to open your product. We rush to the thing that we think is going to get us the outcome, which is like you have to sell on Amazon to make any money on Amazon. Good. A lot of people get there, but then they get stuck because they're like, I'm selling on Amazon now, but I'm not making a lot of money. Um, that was me for some time as well. And the problem generally comes from you don't deserve it. <laughs> the product you're offering, the way you're running your business isn't in line with what equates to a big successful business. It's, it's not like it's luck, it is just the right things to do. And so once you take feeling out of the equation, that's why um, automation, when you said don't do food, it's terrible. It's like, that's not data driven, that's emotions. And that's a horrible way to run a business. I'm, I'm not like, <laughs> you know, coming after you or anything. It's just such a good example. And I, I love to use those things to remind myself because I think this way all the time, right? I have to constantly train myself to be like, you're not using awareness and mindfulness right now and being transparent and wide open with what's happening around you. You're developing an intuition based on what you feel is wrong. But if you just went and go, went over your financial documents and you went over your um, conversion rates and click through rates, and if you don't have anything yet, you don't even have any of those data. So like, Am I making data-based decisions? And if you can fall in love with making data-based de decisions, running experiments and seeing what happens, and then taking that data and making better experiments to further see what happens, um, and 
in doing all that, you're creating massive, valuable offers to your customers and you have a predictable flow of customers and you make a relationship with them. Like anyone can do it. So there was my motivational speech for this video. Uh, let's get back into it. <laughs> um, like the least motivational sp speech, I should say. It was like almost anti-motivation. It was just like basically find something that's really fun to work on even when it's not giving you results because you're not going to have results for a while. And when you do get them, they're probably not going to be the ones you want. And you just have to constantly be curious about what's the next thing um, to make this more irresistible to customers. Like there's a really good book called $100 Million Offers by Alex Ramosi. Many of you probably have heard of this and or have already read it. Um, the man is much more successful than I in the world of business and much more, um, has much more impressions and views on his videos than mine do. Like I'm a, a joke for the amount of reach this guy has and the amount of uh, information that he has. Um, but in this book, he, he talks about the idea of just making an offer so good that it, people would feel stupid saying no. And when I started applying that to Amazon, I was like, how have I not seen this? Like, have I been, have I been blind for the last 15 products? One of the questions that just popped up, have you ever had a product fail, Paul? Yes, everything I ever sold ultimately failed because I'm not selling them anymore. That's why I like took this stance on YouTube. I was like, hey, you know, big flashing stop sign, everyone in the private label community, you're entering a, an endless pit of grind here and it's eventually going to end in your profit being cut to nothing if you're selling this way like this idea of i can just throw my logo onto some chinese product the same one that everyone else has and for some reason oh because i did it i'm going to be successful not the other 2.5 million amazon sellers they're they'll all likely succumb to my market dominance like we, we have these inflatable views of what's actually possible when we're acting that way. And so, yes, have I ever had a product fail? Everything I ever sold up to this product I'm selling right now has been discontinued. I do not sell it anymore. I'd consider them all to be failures. Now, granted, that doesn't mean I didn't make profit off of those. Like I'm looking at, but being realistic about what happened to them. Like, did I sell them forever? And is it what I'm working on now? No. So is that a failure? In my mind, yes, I would say a, any discontinued product that stopped selling because it was no longer favorable to sell that product is a bit of a failure. Now, granted, products have life cycles. And so if it's like, it's more like, did you make money selling it? And by that standard, they were not failures. However, I'm trying to make something that is kind of infinite. I don't want it to be a life cycle of a year at best two, three years, and then like profits are crushed. And to be fair, there is someone profitable in any market that I stopped selling in, but they probably did so by having a longer life cycle for the product and expecting to lose money for years. And I never wanted that. And I didn't care about it enough to stick around and order so many that I could get my cost way down and compete on cost. It just like, that wasn't intriguing to me. Um, is this live or pre-recorded? This is live. Yeah, this is live. What's up? Um, I've been doing a very poor job of actually doing product research because I just start talking. Something ever evolving. We must always improve the product, perfecting it constantly. Um, I, I do agree with you, but I would say you want to I don't know if it's so much about improving the product constantly. Now here's someone who agrees and I'm doing that right now. I, I have a 4.6 star rating and over 220 reviews in the last year on this product that I launched and that's great, right? It's a four and a half star rating when you look at it and we have 85% five star reviews. The re other reviews, a lot of them are threes and we have a few ones and I am perfecting the product in any negative feedback that we've got, even though we have this really kick-ass star rating and lots of positive social proof and everyone says, you have to buy this product, it's expensive and it's worth it. I'm still improving it, so I do agree. However, 
the, the thing that I'm starting to learn and the way that I'm planning on growing, and maybe you can um, attest to this, talking to Zelter Zelteris, by the way, um, is can we create an infinite relationship with our customers in which when they think of this market, they think of us? And can we make make it a fun experience to buy from them and make our brand name the brand name they would suggest by word of mouth to someone else who was looking for a product? Um, so when you can get it to that level and the connection of the person, usually you do it by having a product that's so good, right? Because when products are really good, we recommend them to people. Like, oh, this product's awesome. I had this problem, now solved it. Um, I'm sure putting a product out there that you put on your product ideas into does give a good feedback loop when it's when it does well. I'm slightly confused by that phrasing. Um, yes. Okay, I get it now. Um, anyway, aromatherapy, my honest thoughts when I landed on this market are it's a little bit overwhelmingly large. And so if I were going to do it, I probably would have to go for long tail keywords, but then I get stopped at this binary decision making point, which is yes or no, do I sell this? Why or why not? And one of the things I like to do is assess my competition and look for people who are playing ball and understand the ideas of sourcing or sorry, um, marketing, brand building, um, creative and great presentations. Uh, this Bloom brand or Bloom by Body Restore, they look pretty good. They look pretty good and pretty modern. Um, a lot of these are pretty similar in general, a little bit private label-y looking. Um, they're doing well. They don't look that well, that great to me, but again, what am I doing here? I'm just subjectively looking at the market and thinking like, do any of these look like, if you told me this is a $20 million company, I wouldn't be surprised. And I don't mean like there's no brands there that are that big because like we saw Vapor or Vix up top. I know that's well more than um, seven or eight figure company, <laughs> much larger than that in fact. And yet I would be okay with selling against them because they're, look at what they're doing, right? They have like essentially a newspaper ad for their brand and their product because they're so well known. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to move people and getting it to feel a certain way. This brand's doing that pretty well. The market's really big. I'd have to sell so many to get ranked here. Um, this isn't something that I would probably, boom. And uh, were you also brand registered prior to launch? Brand registered, yes. No search find buy. If you have to do a search find buy to launch, you're essentially doomed to fail. That's a really bold statement, but what I mean by that is if you can't get people to see your product and instantly want to buy it because you don't have a couple of reviews or, you know, you're going to be able to run ads and get impressions. So I'll be able to get people to see my listing. If people are in the beginning are seeing your listing and not buying it, a couple more reviews probably won't change their mind. Um, so yeah, we launched no search find buy no reviews, no weird stuff. Just put the listing out there, started running ads. And within the first couple of days, we were hitting nine, nine units a day. Um, and then just kept scaling from there. Because your offer should be so good, your creative should be so good, that when people see it, they just want to buy it, right? So all we have to do is put it on Amazon and then run some ads, and then people will buy it. Only reason you have to do that is if no one's going to buy it at launch, right? Doesn't that seem in inherently flawed? And like, even if I was going into a really big market, like the one we were just on, the one with um, shower steamers, what the heck are they called? Um, 20,000 sales per month on some of those products. Even there, it's unsustainable to give away enough units unprofitably to try and get ranked there. So you, the real long play is just put out something so good that when people see it, they buy it. Okay, so we're back on handmade and we're in Made in USA. Thanks for everyone who's hanging out with me tonight, by the way. Appreciate you being here. If you guys could do me a favor, if you're watching the stream right now, just leave a like on it, leave a thumbs up. We got like 13 people in here. Um, a lot of you haven't, and it just it just helps me out, does me a favor personally, um, so that it gets out to more people. 
Um, let's see. So did you use Helium 10 at all for finding your product or just the 100 item list that you talked about? I used Helium 10 to analyze my idea. I did not use it to find the idea. So like what I'm doing now. Okay, that's what you just looked at. And then when I'm looking at this stuff, I'm thinking through a few essential questions in my head about the customer. So is this person a um, an enthusiast? Is this an evergreen market? Are there problems to solve here? Well, there's someone selling a product, so that means there's a problem. A product is a solution. And then, let's see, evergreen, enthusiast, problems to solve. Are there future problems to solve? Meaning, can I see a, li a, a skew list of maybe three to five products under this brand? And lastly, could people afford a better option? So we don't want to go like compete with Dollar General on spatulas or silicone, I don't know, oven mitts, right? Because <laughs> the person doesn't care if it's better. They want it to be cheap. And so we don't want a customer like that. We want someone who wants to spend more on a better product. Let me actually... Yeah, I'm going to click off this. They're all doing quite well. Does anyone have any markets that they would like me to check out? If you do, feel free to enter them in the chat. I will certainly do it. So what is this? Lanolin. Is that the brand? No, that's the product. Okay, let's open another Amazon tab. We'll do Lanolin. Check out the search volume and whatnot. Hey, a couple of you like the stream. Thank you. Hopefully YouTube gets my videos out to more people so we can all make successful, awesome Amazon FBA brands made in the US products. Let's do it. All right, let's see, Lanolin. I'm gonna check out search volume and I'm gonna check out the sales. If you see me looking over here, by the way, I got the chat right here and some backend stuff. Just making sure everything's going well. Okay, search volume's good, 17,000. Revenue is good. Uh, what I like to see here is that we have um, most of the sellers doing five figures. So 11,000, 30,000, basically anything between 20, 10 and 99,000. And then um, maybe one or two over six figures. So for instance, 230,000, 111,000. This market's almost perfectly lining up with some of those stats. And there's a few smaller ones doing four figures as well. This looks like a pretty good spread of revenue. Looks like there's quite a few prosperous listings here and now I want to go and make sure that no one's no one's already competing the way we would be and I will always refer to this as an example because it is exactly what we're trying to do evoke a feeling from a customer who's buying a product where the product is not why they're buying it they're not buying it because it's mountain water from the Alps they're buying it because of the can and so is anyone sell it does anyone is anyone selling yeah no does anyone who's selling know that <laughs> see those are the things that would get edited out from a youtube video but live's a little different sean said thanks for all your content i'm about to launch my second product after a six-year gap and your content has really helped with thinking outside the box thanks sean that's very kind of you i appreciate that you are the kind of person who i make these videos for um i've always connected to yeah, the Amazon FBA community, for lack of better words, right? It's like, obviously, this is the thing that I became incredibly passionate about as just a teenager and spent my all of my years running an online business doing. So I'm super stoked to hear that that information that I've learned has been helpful to you. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let's see. Yeah, so this is... No one here, okay, we're getting close, we're getting close. So what does it feel like when I look at it? Does it feel expensive? Does it feel like it has more value than anything else? And so one of the things that I'm trying to get people to realize because it helped me so much, only because it helped me so much, 
is that if you take, <laughs> I'm completely contradicting something I said earlier, but not really, because take data out of the equation in the beginning and truly go off of feeling in the beginning when you're doing product research. I know it sounds very woo woo and very odd. I used to only look at data, but trust me, I failed plenty of times. So clearly just thinking in that way isn't the solution. You, you have to be kind of well-rounded in the beginning. Um, you know, a great business has a bunch of great minds running it. And a lot of them think very differently than each other. And through that friction of quite different ideas, you usually come to a better product that's more well-rounded and less one-sided. In the beginning, you only have yourself most of the time, unless you have a business partner, or a small group of people that you hang out with, which is why I made Savage Sellers, by the way. This almost perfectly, it sounds like a commercial maker, and I swear to God it's not, but I just thought of this. Um, Savage Sellers is a pay what you want course. So you can join for anything over, I think it's a dollar is the minimum amount. Sorry, if you only have 90 cents, you're not gonna be able to get in. But this is where I'm, I'm actively building a course for everyone right now. Um, Basically, I wanna destroy all of the $1,000, $5,000 courses with something that you can join for a dollar. And I wanna grow the largest community of people making profitable US-based brands uh, anywhere on YouTube. Seriously, I just wanna do that. That would be cool. I, you know, I had this way of thinking. I make lists that they're called what would be cool lists. That would be really cool. It would go on that list. And that's the way I like to live my life. Um, so this is completely... Well, it's not, com I almost said it's completely free of charge. It's basically free of charge if you don't want to pay for it. You literally pay uh, 90 cents a cent, uh, or sorry, dollar uh, a month for it. Um, and it is my course. I also do monthly product picks in here. It's free downloads and templates. Um, I do live streams every other week. And uh, yeah, go check that out if you haven't already. Don't, if you're on the edge of thinking about buying someone's expensive course, please do not. Do not give them $1,000 because I, I promise you, I'm holding myself to this. I will make everything that I know when that got me to $300,000 a year on Amazon. Um, I will give it to you for a dollar a month. Uh, okay, <laughs> not an ad read, but if it was, it would have been good. What I was saying is that if you can, if you can just get to um, the place where you're thinking about it from the feeling first, like what does it feel like to look at this thing? You're, you're rounding off an area in the business that most people don't. And that's where relationships with brands start is I saw something on someone that I thought looked cool, uh, like clothing brands, right? Vans, I saw something and made me feel a certain way. The person who uses that product acts a certain way. That's the target demo. Um, I bought a thousand dollar course. I bought a $2,500 course, spent $50 on retail arbitrage course. Yeah. And I'm curious, are you guys um, making money with the information you bought from the courses. I've, so the most expensive course I bought is like $3,500. I swear to God, I do not use information from that course. I knew a lot of it, which is kind of funny. Um, and so, yeah, just because someone, um, makes a course and promises all these results, like results don't happen that way. I don't like, I had a course that was a thousand dollars, by the way. I've been down that road and I evolved and I was like, I don't know, you know, the only thing that I charge close to that kind of money for is my mastermind group, um, building that out right now. And it's about 30% full. I'm closing it at 30 people. I think almost 10 people are in there now. Um, that That's like a really tight knit group of people who actually are doing this and like can afford to do something like that. and want to exchange ideas about branding and like grow successful brands alongside each other very high touch, very one-on-one -on -one. Um, and, you know, Zoom meetings and whatnot, what have you, but like just buying videos for two, three grand, come on, come on, man. Now, all the information you need can be, can be accessed for completely free. And I, I'm trying to boost that and make it a little bit easier for all of you. Thanks for all the engagement in the chat, by the way. It's been super awesome talking to all of you. Um, most of the money made from free information. Yeah, same, I taught myself. Um, I've honestly learned more product research from you than I have there, um, but I learned a lot of ad stuff from there. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yeah, ads are really important. Um, and, and some things, some, some things are like, you, you do need courses. I, I, I don't want to sound like the guy who's like, don't buy courses. That's such stupid advice because there's very specific skills that you can learn that can make you way more money than you paid for the amount you're paying to get in the course. Um, but if you... 
I don't know. You have to weigh out your options of like, do I need more knowledge that I can't get from free stuff? I would just start there. But you don't need to jump the gun and head straight for the course, I'd say most of the time. Like learn, max out the learning you can do until you get to a paywall where it's like, this is as much as I can possibly know for free. Then it starts to make sense because like now someone's selling their advice or their expertise. You might need to talk to them. Um, I've learned from a $4,000 course and from your free content, you've been very helpful. Oh, thank you. Um, spent two years working on packaged food brand only to be confronted the realities of the packaged food industry. Picked this course because it was run by someone with a food brand, uh, but he sold his food brand because it sucked compared to his course money. Yeah, barriers to entry are pretty high in that area. I will say that. I've looked into it a little bit. Um, it's why a lot of these small food brands are getting investments from companies. Very capital intensive, right? There's a lot of variables there. Okay, I think this is not a bad place to start, everyone. This lanolin, uh, you could source it in the US and then make it... Um, I like to model success. So I'd look at other brands who do, okay, here's a, a good example. Like maybe Shea Moisture is like a very popular, excuse me, brand. How would they sell this product? So I might think from that perspective. Um, what's the story here? What are they selling? Um, what does their packaging look like? And don't just copy it. Definitely originality has its place on, um, packaging so like generally juxtaposition works well if you see like liquid death style packaging on a body lotion if you're like wait what but i would click right so that's kind of this that's like where i get i'm even cheesing right now i get excited with that stuff we're like can i shock people and that's what i've done with my um my product i just want to shock people like punch the customers directly in the face <laughs> with your branding um like just i have to click i have to click it's not an option and that's what i mean with like someone asked earlier did have i ever done like um or with this brand did i do search find buy meaning like it's basically like you're paying customers to go buy your product for you so amazon thinks it's a good product it's like no but i just sent a year spent a year making sure that when people saw it it was irresistible and um i love the Communication in the chat, by the way. Can we do that here? I'm curious. I think I don't see anyone doing it here yet. And so for that reason, I would um, I would consider it a decent place to start. I'd look more into that. It's just a product research video. It's not a deep dive into product analyzation, but that's something that interests me and hopefully I've kind of made it clear why. Um, Sean, the course I took, okay, that's not for me. An Aldi's quarter holder? That is so funny. Have you guys in the chat been to Aldi's, by the way? You, you know, you have to put the quarter in to get the cart. That's really funny. Hmm. Stink balm? Why the hell would you need a... A stink bomb? Am I reading this correctly? Why would you need an odor blocking balm? Is this like chapstick sized? I'm clicking out of just pure interest now. I must be ignorant to the use case here. So it's for nurses. Oh, do you put it on you and it makes it so that you can't smell things? Is that what it's for? Let me go to the reviews. See, I shouldn't be this confused. I know I'm not the necessarily the target customer. I may, hey, maybe I am. I don't know, but because I don't even know what that thing is. They're doing a bad job of telling me that. Um, what the heck is this? Um, let's see. Okay, it is for that. That's the use case. You put it on yourself to prevent. I was I was picturing like you're putting it on something that stinks <laughs> to get it to stop stinking. I was like that cannot be right. Um, I didn't know. 
bypass some of what I try to bypass. Interesting product. That they could do a way better job. So with something inherently that funny, inherently that funny, I would be going crazy with the, the creative and the images and the branding here. Um, is Stink Balm something that would be worth looking into? We would have to see. Um, so I just subbed on Patreon. Love your perspective on private label. Only wish I could have found you before I launched my first product. No sense in looking into the past. Thanks, by the way. <laughs> you, you, you found me now. You, you have new experience from the previous product. Um, just constantly be here and now focusing on how to do things that are really cool and exciting to you. Um, thank you, by the way. I'm glad you subbed on Patreon. Looking forward to seeing you on more live streams. Appreciate you. Okay, Stink Bomb. We're going to search that one. Stink Bomb. That's the actual name of the product, though. It's not what people are looking for, I don't think. Maybe it is. I'm curious what the search volume is like. This is where Helium 10 comes in handy a lot of time. Uh, okay. For nurses. So let's try nurses. I'm going to go like nurses odor. Very specific customer. Very specific use case. Uh, employed there, so evergreen. If uh, repurchasable, because you're gonna go through it, if that's your job, you're constantly going to smelly situations. <laughs> Something stinks here. Smelly situations, then might need to buy a lot of this stuff. I like it so far. Only thing I'm not liking is like, how do we get to it? How do we get to it? Because it's just odor eliminator. Maybe we gotta do like odor eliminator balm. Sorry, my mic's covering my keyboard. I'm not a very strong typer. Okay, I didn't pay attention in computer class. Let's see. Um, odor eliminator. So I'm looking at the long tail keywords, looking for something like balm. Hello, love your content. Launched a product in 2020 and it went pretty good. Okay, good. I went back to Amazon FBA. Is it still scalable or is it crowded now? Um, love the question. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the, uh, compliment on the content. Um, is it sc still scalable or is it crowded now? Well, everything's always going to get crowded. So it's the wrong thing, wrong question to ask. Like fuck crowded. Fuck. I'm um, sorry for dropping the F-bomb, but the competition thing, it's just, uh, it's the way that I used to think. And it's, it's kind of BS. What, what you, the way I'd like to reframe your way of thinking, if you would let me if you're open to this is just what is something that I would love to build? And if I were to build an offer really good in this space, a bunch of people would want to buy it because they also love this space. Just like work on something that's super fun to work on so that you work on it harder than anyone else. Cause when something's fun and we're in that flow state, time just flies by, right? I'll spend the whole day fly fishing. I'll wake up early to go fly fishing. I'm going on Wednesday. I have a brand in the fly fishing space and a content creation company in the fly fishing space it's called Savage and Smith. If any of you want to look it up, but point being it's fun to me. So it's going to be successful, right? It's, it's, is it a crowded market fishing? Yeah. There's thousands and thousands of fishing channels on YouTube and there's, you know, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars being made on all these different fishing products, but it's like, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Um, Sean said, thanks. That was my thoughts after looking into it. You need a really good story behind it. Yes, exactly. Good competition in us sourced markets is actually very, um, low in most products or in most markets. I find new opportunities every day. Thanks for the answer. I loved it. Uh, I had a one-to-one -one session with you in 2020 as well. Definitely taking your advice. Oh, fantastic. 2020 was a busy year for me. Um, I'm sure if we hopped on another call, I'd recognize you. Um, but just from behind the chat, uh, I don't at the moment. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for all the questions, by the way, everyone who's here hanging out with me. Um, if you have any, please enter them. Dramada said, hey, Paul, I'm super late. I'll have to watch the replay. Um, well, you're here now. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, please do watch the replay. Uh, we went over some fun stuff. Uh, do I need to be a US-based person? No, you do not. No, you do not. You can do this from anywhere in the world. All you need is a laptop and an internet connection. And that's part of what made this business model so cool to me in the beginning too. Um, all right. 
Odor Eliminator Balm. So there's Odor Blocker. So Stink Balm is really the only one doing this. Um, how big? I, I, I'm having trouble finding the market. So I, I wonder if they're getting a lot of their customers, they're acquiring customers off Amazon because there's not a ton of things to rank for here. So it must be like an existing uh, website or they got in QVC or something of that sort. Um, Andromeda said, you're welcome. Thank you from Canada. Hey, I, I should say, hey, I love Canada. I've only been there a handful of times uh, when I moved to Washington State. I drove up to BC one time and hung out in Vancouver. Fantastic, um, beautiful country, beautiful landscape. And um, one time I took a ferry ride over to Victoria, BC as well. Also incredibly nice. Um, everyone's so nice there. Thanks for being here, by the way. Um, okay, so stink. Yeah, we're, we're out of this. It's just, I'm bored at this point. How, it's, it, we took too long to look into it. I'm over it. <laughs> but no, no, I, I did come to a conclusion. I'm just being a little bit of a smart ass. Um, I, I don't see a lot of existing search volume. So if, if that's not there, there's no customers, no warm, engaged leads. Like I, I can't, well, they're not engaged leads for us, but they're like, there's lead flow to the market, um, customer interest that I can hijack. It it's, didn't seem to be there. Uh, by the way, for anyone just tuning into the stream, I see we got 20 people in here. Um, I would hope that we can get 20 messages in the chat, even if you're saying where you're tuning in from, I'd love to hear from you. But other than that, we're, we're just doing some live product research, um, not not scripted, not really much of an idea here. Just wanted to uh, pop in, hang out with my subscribers, do some product research. Uh, it's the part of the business that most people struggle with. So I wanted to try and make it a little bit easier for you by watching me do it. Um, maybe take away from some of the, I don't know, the friction for you. Um, I would encourage you to open a tab. If you're watching this on your computer, uh, do it alongside me, um, you know, Maybe we'll do this more consistently. Uh, in fact, I, I go live in Savage Sellers every two weeks and you can join for as little as a dollar in case you mitch, missed my um, epic sales pitch on my $1 course. Um, tuning in from California. Must be a lot warmer, unless you're in Northern Cali uh, than where I am right now. Um, Logan said, so glad I'm able to be a part of this. Well, thank you for being here. I'm so glad you're, you're here. Um, what do you think the next few steps in your brand um, you know what's annoying me right now? I keep stuttering and it, it, it's making me sound illiterate because the damn heart on the chat is covering, there we go. The heart on the chat was covering the little emoji thing. Um, it was covering half of your guys' sentences. Okay, Southern LA. Okay, yeah, much warmer than where I'm at right now. I'm up in, up in Northern Washington. Okay, cool. So, uh, by the way, also, for those of you who are just now tuning in, I may have missed the beginning. We're in the handmade tab on Amazon. Maybe we'll move soon, but right now we're in handmade and we are in made in USA. So I was like, you know, I do the USA, uh, made in USA thing. I showed this earlier, but there's a bunch of new people in the chat. Just so you know who I am, what I do, in case you're new here, um, I built a made in USA brand 330,000 in the last year and one product we're launching our second product this year hopefully a handful of products this year to try and get to seven figures but i'm just trying to document the process live um you know full transparency i, I don't tell people what i sell because it just skews all of my brand analytics and data people subscribers start searching for my brand and clicking on my ads it just doesn't work i've done it in the past and i actually had to start a new company and a new amazon seller central account because it got that bad um but um yeah, that, that's what I'm doing. Um, so if you're here, if you're new, please consider subscribing down below. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. So we're on the Made in the USA tab. Tennessee, kind of warm. What's kind of warm to you? And then I just opened this initially. Um to see basically where all the money was at. <laughs> but Amazon's making this so easy because like you can just see it here now. Half the time, I don't even open it up up there. Um, for everyone else, Paul's kind of actually very effective. I had taken, hey, I'm gonna read this. This sounds like it's gonna uh, boost my ego. 
Um, so Paul's content is actually very effective. I had taken his advice from his videos, course, and his sessions to learn a lot of things. If anyone is hesitating to start, don't. Um, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, terminate your old account. Um, I held on to it for a while just to use as examples because like showing inside of Seller Central was nice because I didn't have to blur it or anything. Um, but it wasn't just that. I wanted to get away from the private label model altogether anyway um, and move to um, brand building where I'm like focusing on, you know, one thing, making it amazing, making it the best product on the market. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was a clean split. I have no regrets about what I did um, with the like public Amazon account in 2020. Um, 56 degrees at the moment. Okay, that's not that's not too bad. Um, let's see, where are we at? I'm at 40 at the moment. It's a bit colder. Um, okay, cool. So what, what what's some of this stuff? This is a good example of something I wouldn't want to sell. Uh, galvanized wash tub with shelves, rustic bathroom decor. You're going to be competing with everyone else. All they care about is what the product looks like, and they don't give a crap who they're buying it from. Bad brand building market. Cast iron pan, a lot of these products that have only a utility that they're trying to achieve and not really a customer that's going to be engaging in um, the market, then I, I, I would probably avoid those. Said, you missed my question. Can you please answer it? Oh, sorry. I just went right on. Yeah. Um, have you thought of building a small team to scale your business, like hiring a growth manager, marketer, or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I have to. I have to hire at some point. It's definitely on my mind. Not enough so to like really talk about it here yet uh, with my audience or anything. Still, we'll be able to continue running it uh, just with myself and my partner. We have one virtual assistant. Um, but when I do get into hiring, uh, I'll, I'll let you know on what my kind of SOPs are and how I went through that process and found the right fit. Now I do know intuitively you don't grow to hire, you hire to grow, but I am kind of growing to hire a little bit. It, it will probably equate in slight inconveniences in the future with having to train people on the fly, but it, it's just not like, it's not my priority right now. There, there are better things that I can do at the moment from my own perspective to like just quickly make more, um, more growth this year, more profit this year. So I'm gonna do those things first. Um, and it hasn't gotten close enough to being unbearable yet or unhandleable for my own self, the workload. So, um, yeah, when I do, I will certainly let you know, I'll document the process. So I'd be very happy to work with you if I could get the chance. Oh, thanks. Awesome. Well, hang around, um, keep engaging with me, and I'm sure when the time comes, if there's a spot that you fit in, I would be more than happy to talk to you. All right. So I, I think, let's see, we're, we're kind of losing the kind of ideas that I'm looking for at this point down this far. Uh, let's try page two. Let's see. I want to open up Helium 10 too and see if there's enough volume at this point or if we're just losing it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's loading. Yeah, there's some volume here. Uh, this one's doing 14,000, it's a little low. 40,000, look at me, I sound so pompous. I'm like 14,000, it's a little low. But no, seriously, like uh, the products that I'm looking to sell, uh, I, I'm really not gonna bother with them unless I can make $1,000 a day in sales. And I'm like, it's just, it's a bad use of time because it, it takes a while to develop a product no matter what. So it's like, you, you wanna sell something that's gonna be substantial. Um, if I want to make a great product, if it caps out, and, and granted, it, it might not be that the product and the market size isn't big enough, that that's just where they're at in their sales process, you know. Um, but 
inherently when I'm looking at it in a one track way like this, just revenue, that's what I'm thinking. I like a nose ring, like no one cares who they're buying that from. And I think it's gonna be pretty hard to like get the customer to care about your brand and why they should buy it from you. And so that's the lens that I'm looking through this stuff at a lot, a lot of the time. Question for everyone who's in the chat live. Can you let me know what stage of the business you're in right now? And if you're just a beginner and like you legitimately are doing product research, feel free to just say product research. You don't have to be selling, but I'm just curious. I want to get an idea of like some people, um, you know, we got the coolest chill spot here on the internet, the Amazon FBA space, uh, certainly, and possibly the entire internet. So I, I want to hear from you. Hop in the chat. Let's have, um, let's have a discussion. Okay, cool. So let me close some of this stuff down. There we go. Let's go over to black box. We were on Amazon for a while. Um, I posted the link in the chat for this some time ago. Um, if you don't have helium 10, you want to follow along, but most of you probably already do. So the way that I like to do this really is go very, very broad with it. In the product research, um, Greg is in the product research stage and learning how to use Helium 10. Awesome. Um, Randy launched a few products, limited success, looking to follow your business model, build a brand. Awesome. See, this is so helpful. It's very cool to hear where everyone's at. Um, both of you, great job taking action in general. You got further than a lot of people do. And I would just encourage you to keep thinking about what it is that you need to do to get the customer to really want to buy from you more than anyone else. Just make it a no-brainer. Search by a minimum of 5,000. And let's max it out at like 30,000. And then let's just look at 20,000 per month to 200,000 per month. So super, super broad. I'm not even going to select a category. I'm going to do max review kind of like. It, it also doesn't matter because most of the time I don't see reviews high enough for me to be scared of. I compete right now against a seller with 14,000 reviews in their nationwide and retail stores. And like, I'm serious when I say it's about the relationship between you and your customer. But most people just hear that and they just go brush it off, brush it off, brush it off. Cause it's like, what does that even mean? I know it's hard to wrap your head around, but it's just like, have you ever looked at something and been like, I have to get that. I have to get it. And you get an email and like, you know, one of your favorite brands released a product. I'm getting it. Like, how can you get that feeling to happen? Um, usually it's presentation is like what it feels like to interact with that company. Um, and so I'm like a broken record here. I love saying shit like that because it is true. And then once you're going to get it eventually, maybe successfully, you're like, damn it, Paul told me it'd be this way. Um, <laughs> it's great, great acting. Um, autopilot, as I said, um, I had launched a product, got five to 10 units left in my inventory, went to study my master's. So I had a gap. Um, just felt like seeing you again. I watched a couple years ago. I think not even product research yet. So um, appreciate you being here. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want you to get uh, defensive about this, but why do you think it is that you haven't built something? Because I, I don't want you to go another th three years or two years, Logan, without having something that you're proud of. Maybe you have other things you're proud of and you're just like, this place interests you. I'm, gonna, I'm just doing research for the sake of research. I love the research itself. I have no no plans of selling, but like if you do have plans of selling, what is it? Is it money? You can't invest capital. Like let, let's put our pedal down on the gas of like experience and uh, action a little bit. Um, because if you've been around for years, you probably know more than you're taking action on. Um, again, I'm not trying to like, I'm not here to give you guys advice. It's the last thing I want to do is be a guru. Uh, procrastination. So it's like, yeah, I'm not here to give you guys advice. I'm just, I'm just talking. Think of this like entertainment, seriously, because it's like, that's what it is for me. I, I just like, I like the space. I like this. This is like fun to me. It's like play. Um, so, and that's a good tip for you. You said procrastination, Logan, by the way, it's like, we don't procrastinate at things we like. It's like, I don't have to tell you to stop playing video games or start playing video games. Like if, and I'm using that as a generic example of something you might like doing. It's like, you're just gonna go do it. And like, you do it every night after work. 
And so like, if you can turn this into that, where like there is no procrastination, it doesn't even like the word doesn't apply anymore because it's just like something you do because it's fun to you. Um, so try and build it that way where it's like, it's not daunting. Like what, what would be cool for you if like you can make five grand a month selling a product? Like what would that, what would that experience of building that look like? What would it have to be to get you excited? And I would just start like making it making it fun. That's what I had to do. And that's why I stopped selling Chinese products. Seriously. I know like if you've been here any amount of time, you know this about me already, but I stopped ordering from Alibaba because I was just like, this is almost unsettling to me. Not only do I not like it, it's so frustrating. Uh, it, it's not where I thrive as an entrepreneur. I, I'd much rather have a simple like company locally make my product and just like talk to them on the phone. Like that's more my speed. Seriously, it is. And it made it so much more fun for me. I, I, I have a 27 days left of inventory right now and I I ordered like I'm not sweating I don't care this is natural flux like natural way that we're doing our inventory flow I ordered like now right like they're picking up my shipment of eight pallets on Tuesday 1200 units and it's like I can I can do that 27 days out it'll be there and checked in in 10 and so like I can ride my inventory levels like that and have this um, really healthy actual cash flow. I don't have to order like set like six months of inventory at a time. And also Amazon loves it because they're not holding, you're not like getting increased long-term storage fees. Like um, it's, there's a lot of benefits to doing it. And it's so fun and it's so healthy for me. Like I feel so comforted by what I've built and it feels really secure and it feels very stable. Like I'm not worried about, you know, U S relations with China, sh and like that kind of political world economic stuff changing. Like, um, it's just so nice. So relaxing. So Paul, have you been consistently launching new products or you've got some great sellers making money? I have one product right now. That's all I've done for the last year. That's all the sales I ever show is just that one product. Um, and the reason for that is because again, it's so much of a game for me of just making this thing and doing it right the first time that we spend a whole year, um, just selling that product. And we're, we're, we're now going to launch our second product and probably, uh, of this brand in in about 40 days, that's my honest guess. We're about 40 days out from doing that. Um, Logan said, the reason why I like you like seeing you is because it's just a natural conversation, uh, than teaching. Yeah. I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be a guru. Uh, I'm not either of those things. And so I confused myself for a while because I thought I had to be a teacher on YouTube. Um, and I might've even come off as disgenuine. I, I got to look up, is it ingenuine? I've been saying this word, like I think I've been saying it wrong forever. But um, yeah, I, I was always just like, you should just hang out on YouTube. Like that should be the vibe. And so my goal is to just have the Amazon or e-commerce brand building YouTube channel that's just like a hangout spot. Um, Thank you for saying that about it. It's like the best compliment you could have given me. Little did you, did you know. Um, if you don't mind me asking, why not sooner to launch just trying to gauge the whole process? Because that doesn't work. We don't figure things out after. <laughs> things become great because you made them great before launch. It's like you don't go into a um, go into a meeting and like improv your way through the pitch. It's like, no, the reason the pitch was so good is because you spent the last 30 days every day, two hours a day developing it. Right. And so Amazon FBA private label e-commerce is the same way. The, 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 the reward that you get is from the year of work up until launch, not launch happening. And then you figuring things out along the way. The only thing launch happening and then figuring shit out is it complicates everything, makes it harder because now I have bad reviews on a product that we launched and I can't gauge the success of a great product with great branding on the launch of a suboptimal product with suboptimal branding because it took less time. It's like I launch as fast as I can where I'm like I'm at this. This is the best possible thing I can do with the time that I've put into it and the money I can afford to put into it. That's when it goes live. And what's a year for a successful brand to you know grow to fruition or four years of launching shit and waiting for it to work, right? And so again, I'm not like coming for you or like, I know I get like passionate, excited. Um, when I say stuff like this, it's because I've been through it and that's the way my mind works. And so if I'm taking a stance, I'm defending it for a reason that's based in real experience, not just hypothetical. Um, granted, I don't have that much experience. So again, I don't want to, 
<laughs> I don't want to put on the show that I'm the guru and the guy teaching behind the camera because it's really not. I, I consider this much more like um, Logan said, just a conversation. Um, if you don't mind me, oh, sorry, we already read that. Um, do you start on Amazon, find potential products, and find out if there's a U.S. manufacturer or the other way around? Well, right now, well, all stream, we had been doing um, starting from things that are likely to be made in the USA and working backwards or going forwards. What the hell am I saying? Um, starting from made in USA, yeah, and not going backwards. You're already there. Um, <laughs> right now on, on Blackbox, we're working backwards, which is like finding products that are selling well and then trying to figure out if we can sell them in the U.S., um, so you're waiting due to optimization, not manufacturing time. Yeah, manufacturing is not the hard part. When we say go, we can go and we can get it out the door. It's R&D and it is package design. And it's all those things that we got to get right. It's the, you know, idea to fruition is quite a long process. There's a lot of things you got to get right in there. Um, if it was just ideas, I could launch them all tomorrow. But figuring out this is the idea now how do i execute on it and make it the best way there's a lot of variables when it comes to designing a product in terms of what makes it really successful and you being able to understand what your customer wants from it is the biggest one being able to bring that to fruition um, so that process of like well we we can make this but is that the best thing that is that what that customer actually wants that process of surveying testing sampling creating getting it right before you go to market and find product market fit that that generally takes a while um thanks by the way one of your very first subscribers i remember you telling a story about your first product i think it was a gaming controller it was and, and you blew your 50k on a joint uh it's very true very true um that did happen <laughs> um does your u.s manufacturer handle packaging as well no we have a packaging company that we order from in the u.s as well shipped to my manufacturer uh, my manufacturer stores my packaging, by the way. So, yeah, uh, a lot of moving parts as I'm learning. Patience. Yeah, patience, right? And, and it's just like consistent action. That's why I said it. You have to like it. You have to enjoy it. Because for it to be successful, you have to do it long enough for it to get successful. Um, so, yeah, that's super important. Patience, that is. Um, and patience goes back to the whole, like, um, Sorry, I read another thing and it confused me or it just got me off track. Patience goes back to the whole thing of like why we don't just launch products and like wait to find the winner. Like the one that takes off, I'll just double down on that. It's not the right way of thinking about it. You have to make pre-planned calculated decisions about why things are going to work and then bring them to market and shock everyone because it's so good. So it's like a iceberg, right? It's like all of the hard work didn't get seen and then the offer gets released when it's at its best. Not just try a bunch of bad offers and see which one sticks. That's the wrong wrong way to think about it. Are you still doing the $1 guide or is there a new thing? So I have a pay what you want course. It's basically just donation based. So it's like the videos that I'm making, I'm actively making, I do about one a week. Uh, I was a little bit slower when I was getting some stuff off the ground, but now we're back to one, on, one a week. So it's like coming out actively. Right now it'll get you through from a beginner to sourcing in the US. Now I'm trying to go back in with advanced strategies. Uh, but yeah, I still do that. Um, just pay what you want. If you want to donate more, you appreciate what I do, you can, but you can get in for as little as $1. That's savagesellers.com. Um, product you sell, you're passionate about it, or just something you knew you could optimize. Yeah, that's a really good question. Like, am I my customer? I'm not my customer, but I'm so passionate about the process of, I love my customers, I'm very passionate about the process. I'm just just making the best possible option somewhere. The, the the actual game of the business is what's fun to me and what I'm passionate about, but I'm not my customer. Um, started in 2018 selling books on Amazon and after listening to you and a few others, I launched a single US made in USA product in 2020, which I managed to grow to 10K per month on average. Thanks. Tony, that's awesome. Fantastic. Love to hear that. Very cool. Very cool. So what do you say we do some scrolling? I always start from the idea of just like, do I think I could stop this person who's looking for this thing in their tracks? I know that's like a bit of an obscure question, but that is really the way that I think about this. Um, hi Paul, what do you think about selling, starting with a low demand product, 100 units per month, with opportunity to improve marketing? I've been hearing in videos you should look for a minimum of 300. That sounds like old criteria. 
um, the, the, think of it this way, whatever you can afford to do, <laughs> just, hmm, I'm thinking about how I want to answer this. I don't want to jump the gun here. Let me think for a second. I don't want to give you a generic automated response. I want to think about that. Um, should you start a low demand product with hundred units per month? Here's my whole thing. If you can get the idea of why the 130 unit per month product is going to be successful down, the same would be true of something that sold, sold 500 units per month or fast forward 800 units per month or 1,000 units per month. So go to the upper end of where you can afford to, and again, I cannot give financial advice, but this is what I did. I was like, I'm gonna use a lot of my starting capital and I'm gonna make sure that it works because I know it's the best thing in the market. So it would have been a waste of time for me to put a lot of the energy into R&D, make it successful, win with branding, great product design, great marketing. Um, and then it's like, oh, great, 130 units per month, <laughs> 60 bucks a day, yay, right? So that's just me. I like, you know, went a little bit bigger than that in the beginning. Yeah, you need demand or no point, exactly. To me, 130 units per month, I mean, my friend, you're gonna be selling like four units a day. That's not very exciting to me. So I think, like, like I said, if you can afford to go bigger, don't limit yourself and think that you have to start there. That's just like the wrong way of thinking about it. You can just start a, a brand that's much bigger than that right away. If you actually understand the process, and if you don't understand the process, don't go into a low competition market. Cause you're not gonna, I mean, you'll learn more doing it sure but like i can tell you right now that it's just not like it's not enough demand you don't need to learn that lesson by doing it and then start again in a year if instead you just spend three months learning the way to do it and make it successful in a market three times as big see what i'm saying i remember you said that someone started with two hundred dollars um yes you could too I mean, you can go order stuff that's that cheap. At that point, I don't think you should be selling a product. Like you shouldn't be designing a product if you have $200. You need to go make more money before you design a product and build a brand. <laughs> um, you snowball that to a couple grand, then it's realistic. Um, but th that's like, you really have to just go get lucky. It's not even really get lucky. It's very difficult to turn a custom product with 200, I would just be buying existing products that already sell and arbitraging the price. Like I would just be doing arbitrage at that point. Um, what are some things you can do after launching a product to increase margins after gaining some keyword ranking? Look at where you're wasting money and where you don't need to be paying for ads. Because we launch all these ads and that's a little bit more of like throw everything at the board and see what sticks mentality. I've launched tons of ads that don't run anymore because they were slightly not what my product's slightly not what my customer is looking for. I'll give you an example of this. If, if we were selling um, a magic balm, and earlier in the stream, we found this thing called a, uh, where is it? Can we find it again? Yeah, uh, nope, it's not that one. Here we go, stink balm. It's both balms, one of them is for getting rid of odors. The other one is for um, putting on your skin and nourishing and moisturizing skin. You might have crossover where like you're targeting some of those keywords that relate more to the other product. You're never gonna convert for them and you might waste $90 a month on that keyword. Um, so you really get a good understanding of what you're spending money on and why you are. The only reason we would is if we wanna increase our sales rank for something because we already sell well there. So we're doubling down on what's working for us where we convert well. Um, and that was up to you to figure out before you went to market, not after. So you wanna get really specific about who is this for? Based on search volume, what should I really make my title and what should I really make my product? Because we just want to intercept exactly what they're already looking for. Um, in this case, if, if stink balm was the thing we were doing, we wouldn't want to um, try and get a little bit of this market too. It's like, no, you just want to dominate that market. So go look at where you're wasting money on ads. That's the biggest one. Um, the next one would be your fees that you're paying. Those are a lot of the times, unless you've done something way wrong in the way you've packed your product, those tend to be more, um, set in stone unless there's like a lot of you know unless there's changes you can make to that. that that would be another way thing to take a look at most of the time before the fact though hopefully that was helpful 
Wow, we've been live for an hour and 20 minutes. I've been hanging out with you guys for a long time now. Sorry we're not doing like a ton of product research. I'm kind of just um, talking most of the time. Thanks for answering my question, Pauls. Please do more of these live sessions. I'd join them all. Got to go sleep. It's 2 a.m. here in the UK. Good night. <laughs> yeah, I think you should go to sleep. Good night, buddy. Um, 2 a.m. is pretty late. Um, Hip said it was. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, everyone, I think we're going to wrap it up there. It is actually getting late for me, too. I got to get started on some dinner. Thanks to everyone who tuned in live, um, and I appreciate you all being here. I, I will do more of these live streams. If you want to catch more of them, like I said, um, you know, I do these every other week in Savage Sellers, and you can join for as little as a dollar. Not trying to take your money, but if you pay for it, you will value it instantly more. That is science. <laughs> so, so hopefully I'll see you in there. Thanks for being here. Appreciate talking to all of you. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.